because you have to be able to get your measurement in between the battery monitoring system and the um, and the battery itself. But then you disconnect the battery monitoring system, and that stuffs the battery monitoring stu system up. And so you know this was a month-long process trying to actually just measure the amount of power that this laptop was using. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, one, one idea um, we had at one point was using the, uh, power measurements as an uh, as a um, power measurements as an input to the model. So basically measuring what the power is, and that takes into account quite a lot of the other stuff in the system that really doesn't depend on frequency and voltage. So if you feed um, the power measurement in as a as a parameter into your model, along with your performance counters and that sort of thing, you can come up with uh, a more accurate model for for the system. So instead of we, we weren't actually using it to, to tune the system. We were using it to um, as an input to the um, as an input to the model. But you could potentially uh, have have um, have models which correct the correct the coefficients in the model as you go. Can you explain about the uh, package What the difference is? It's just got a few extra. It, it it reads some extra stuff from the proc interface, and um and displays it. It, it, it but it reads that information in. And it's just kind of a nice. You can you can sit there and 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 have all that data coming out of Koala. It it basically estimates what the what the system's energy is online, using the performance counters, or what the what what the actual energy is at all the different frequencies. Yeah. How did you work out the best? performance monitoring counters to actually use because you know Intel gives you like, like 50 or something to choose from and you can count like two at once. So <laughs> how did you find the best two to actually use? Oh man, okay, so we, we came up with a way of, of doing that. Um, and it basically involves measuring the power and performance of a whole bunch of different benchmarks for every different performance counter at every different frequency, which ends up being a lot of benchmarks. So um, Eighteen days or something worth of benchmarks. Um, and once once you have all that data, you can put together. Okay, if you if you assume that the benchmarks all run pretty consistently, or you run multiple iterations of the benchmark to do that, but at eighteen days a pop, it kind of is tricky. Um, if you if you you can then work out okay for every every performance counter for every benchmark at every frequency, and you can run, do a parameter selection um, based on that. So you do. Build a, a statistical statistical model and work out which one has the um, the high which which two counters give you the model with the highest R squared, and that seems to basically work. And it it, it I mean at at the very least it cuts down the field of um, parameters which you need to try. And uh, often the performance counters that were actually chosen were closely correlated to memory accesses and things like that, which determine the sort of slowdown you get from frequency counting. Any other final questions? Okay, thanks guys.